Can adjust the lighting in here a little. All right, you're all set. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. I'm Mitch Goldblatt, Chairman of the Orange Recycling Committee. I want to call this regular meeting to order Wednesday, January 20th, 2020. It is, we're a little bit late right now, about 7 10 p.m. And I want to call the meeting to order. And with us tonight, we have uh, members of the committee of Loretta Smith, Karen Della Justina, Patrick O'Gall. Chris Prokoff, Eileen Moyer, Mark Moyer, Wendy Novick. We have a couple of guests. Uh, our town engineer, Bob Britton, is with us, as well as Susan Weiland, a member of the public. So with that, is there any public input? I'll turn to um, Susan, who's a member of the public. <laughs> OK. Um, <laughs> public, public question um, regarding battery recycling. Um, what, where should batteries of different sorts be recycled? Good question. Most of the most of the household batteries, the A's, the double A's, the tri double A's, triple A's, C's, D's, all get thrown in the garbage. Um, okay. Chargeable batteries, I believe you can bring back to Home Depot. I don't know if anybody can confirm that for me. Um, Large the, batteries like those from a car or a boat, I believe, can be taken to the Has Waste uh, uh, Central. Bob, do you know anything more about that? And Bob Britton's on the, the call from our Public Works Department. Batteries Plus does take some batteries, but not the household batteries that you first named. Right. The household ones are, are to be thrown away. There's nothing hazardous in them, and it's, they're not recyclable. Okay. What does Batteries Plus take? Batteries plus, I think we'll take the rechargeables. Yeah, I think Home Depot does too. I think I, they have Home to Depot does too. Walk in. You mean even the little rechargeables, like the double A rechargeables? I believe so. Yeah, I believe Home Depot does. Okay, thanks. I know car batteries are, um, you can re okay. return them where you, uh, like where you buy bat car batteries. Mm -hmm. There may be a fee though. Okay, thanks. Okay. This is Thank Chris you. Kelly from OGAT. Hey, Chris. And I actually have a, a comment about that just because you were talking about the batteries and the car batteries specifically. Um, there's a place, Alderman and Alderman Dow Iron and Metal in New Haven. And car batteries are, I, I believe, lead acid batteries. And they are actually worth money. So if you bring them there, you will get uh, some money for them. Mm. OK. Even better. Yeah. Thanks, Chris. Got it. All right. Now, I mean, you know, now you now you kind of like you know make the make the scorecard. We put you in the minutes now. <laughs> sure. What was that name again? Can he say that name again? Uh, Alderman Dow, the uh, scrap metal uh, recycling in New Haven. All right. Any other public input? If not, um, we can move on to the minutes of December 16th. Or are there any additions or corrections to the minutes from our last meeting of December 16th? And if not, is there a motion to approve the minutes from December 16th? Motion. Motion by Eileen. Is there a second? Seconded by Karen. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Seeing none, the motion carries unanimously. Okay, Treasurer's Report, Mark Moyer. Yes, we uh, had one invoice with Fast Signs for $54.94 to replace one of the signs at the transfer station. So our current balance is $1,907.44. Okay. Any questions for Mark? If not, thank you. You're welcome. 
All right. Update on residential recycling. I passed uh, out the, um, the the spreadsheet to everyone. We ended the year up as str strongly because, uh, uh, well, I've got the wrong. What I printed out is not what I what I sent to you. Somebody else want to take this away? <laughs> Someone else have it in front of them? Well, I saw that we had uh, eighty-seven point three seven uh, tons. I guess it's, it is compared to seventy-seven point nine five. So we're up 12.1% for the month of December. And for the year, we were up 4.3%. Yep. Actually, I do have the right thing printed out. I'm sorry. I'm looking at it. And yeah. thinking, looking, I looked 1920. It's looking the other way around. You're right. So thank you, Mark. We did end the year 4.3% up from last year, um, calendar year. Um, so Hopefully we're seeing people recycling more and uh, that's a good sign, mm -hmm. good sign. Um, next, I just got the numbers from Sylvie yesterday. We also had a strong December with the simple recycling, uh, collected just under 13,000 pounds in the month of December, which translates into $745 for the town. So, just in the three, just three plus months, uh, the last three months of the year, uh, the town received just under twenty-two hundred dollars, twenty-one hundred ninety-four dollars and twenty-one cents wow. um, from That's simple great. recycling. So That's great. Uh, things are working out uh, well with that. I uh, hope it continues. The one thing that you don't see in this chart because the chart, the um, the breakdown that Sylvie gets is broken down this way. The amount of uh, tonnage or pounds coming from the bin behind High Plains is extremely low. Uh -huh. So let's keep promoting the fact that there is a drop-off bin um, just be behind the cafeteria at High Plains, uh -huh. available 24-7, uh, unlike the transfer station. So uh, people should want to take advantage of that. And if they have especially clothing and shoes, which are easy to put in that bin, anything bigger, you really can't put in there, but if you have stuff in a bag, such as a pink bag, uh, it's very easy to put into that bin, and it's uh, self-closing, so it's pretty pretty secure. Yes. Any questions on the recycling by Simple Recycling in textiles? Okay. If not, we'll move on to old business. Um, New plastic bag shed at the transfer station. Chris, what are you going to tell us? Anything? <laughs> yeah, not not at this time, Mitch or others. Uh, no uh, no movement with our shed, so we're going to have to stay patient with our current plastic shed. And I'm still waiting for some updates in regards to uh, when that permanent one may be approved and brought over to, for us. So Very I guess good. we will stay we will stay patient for a little while longer. Okay, very good. Um, yeah, we'll stay patient. Um, the, the shed that's there is, is working, but of course yeah. we would like a more permanent structure and we'll just be patient uh, with Home Depot through the pandemic, which seems to be the, the big hold up there. Absolutely. I, I still, you know, I, obviously we appreciate their efforts. I have gotten a little concerned when we've had some of those windy storms that perhaps that, <laughs> that shed may uh, lift up again, but so far so good. Yeah. As soon as I hear anything, I'll definitely report up to you all. Okay. Um, simple recycling of the transfer station. Um, just a quick report on that. Uh, Sonny Wilkins and I have had a couple of discussions. Um, this seems to be running a lot smoother up there now. I've had a couple of discussions with uh, Vicki. Uh, they are um, uh, removing things on a regular basis. They have bins in there now, which are sturdy and um, are, are holding up materials much better. And this, the only thing Sonny and I had a little discussion about uh, a week or so ago was the fact that the sign, I was very concerned about how long that sign is going to last if it doesn't get some permanent um, attachments. It's got a permanent attachment at the top. And for some reason, they didn't, they didn't attach the bottom. So there's a lot of movement, especially at the wind. 
each time I'm there, I'm moving those big heavy magnets to try and keep it in place, but obviously that doesn't work uh, on a long-term basis. Um, Bob Britton's on the phone. Bob, do you have anything, comments from Transfer Station, anything we should know about the um, simple recycling trailer and how it's working out up there? No, oh, I heard some grumbling in the beginning about not getting emptied enough, but I think you said that's what's that to keep after them. <clears throat> okay. I think it's uh, much improved. I think you're right. In the beginning, there was some issues. We got that pretty much taken care of. Thank you. Any other questions about simple recycling at the transfer station? Just a reminder, can you guys uh, clarify for me, they still accept like what we used to put on the pink bags, any of the ripped and torn yep. items as well? So that's oh, still yeah. acceptable plus all the others, right? Yep, you can bring all kinds of uh, clothing, new, used, torn if it is, stained. Um, there, they will accept all the clothing, all the shoes, boots, handbags, pocketbooks, hats, gloves, coats, um, and then small appliances and a lot of other, you know, household um, items. I was uh, the, the, ma the major focus is the clothes, that, you know, that most people, that's the easiest thing people are always looking to, to get rid of. Pat, yeah, yeah, and I was up there today. I, I dropped a few things off, and it looked pretty clean and organized. It was Good. Yeah. Good. All righty. Um, other old business. We're still got tour of Oak Ridge recycling plant on hold till after the uh, we can find time after pandemic or after everybody's getting vaccinated. Uh, any other old business? Loretta. Um. Oh, Eileen, you had you had mentioned to me about uh, for the newspaper putting the logo of uh, Orange Recycling Committee. I put it on there every time. They don't print it because they hardly give us any space. And you may have noticed two newspapers a day ago. We were on the next to the last page, bottom right hand corner. So I wrote to the editor and the owner and asked if we couldn't have a little more visibility and we got it this time. So I was happy for that. And um, I have a few things, Eileen, that um, might be to send you some items that you, you might put on Facebook. Please, I can, it's been a little, you know, slim pickings for interesting Facebook posts lately. So I'll, I'll take what I can get. Want. I appreciate it. I find, I find stuff in Wall Street Journal that's that deals with recycling. That's good. So Excellent. I'll send, Thank you. Yeah, I'll send these things to you. Great. Perfect. Anybody, if anybody has things they would like to share, be shared on our Facebook page, as long as it's not like promoting any, you know, products or anything like that. It's no. Great job. So please, good. please share. Anytime. Thanks, Loretta. I think the, la mm. the last issue got some good ink and a good space. You're right. We did much did better, and uh, hopefully people are. Uh, are reading it. It would be great. Because <clears throat> that's our job, to promote recycling. And one way we'll be able to do that is through the uh, the media, obviously. OK, uh, moving on to new business. Um, well, it's the middle of January, and April's not that far behind. So we're, we're all, all ready to go for our next uh, shredding day, April 10th. Nothing much for us to do right now, except just you know, when people ask, tell them or let them know. Uh, Loretta, as we get closer, since the newspapers only come out, you know, every so often, mm -hmm. um, you're going to want to, you know, make sure we get that notice in the, in the newspaper prior to the event. March, March newspaper. Yeah. yeah for April 10th, same thing, yeah. Eileen on the, on Facebook and the webpage, you probably already have that. So, um, so I think we're raring to go for that, and I'm sure it's going to be run very similar to the last time, uh, pop the trunk kind of thing, and we'll try to enforce that more so this time, in fact. It worked well last time. Yep. Um, I have not heard more about the proposed expanded bottle bill, but I have had conversation with uh, James Maroney, uh, our state senator, who... Um, I gave him information about it. This, I, I told him about the support from this uh, this committee at our last meeting, and he said he'd be uh, uh, watching for it because it looks like his understanding is DEP is going to be the ones that are going to be promoting it and probably suggesting it through the 
Environment Committee. Um, I've not seen anything about any hearings. Of course, hearings are now all virtual. Um, I did say that if I was available, I'd be happy to speak uh, to the bill, if there is one, um, on behalf of myself and, and the committee. So if I hear more about it, I will be sure to email the committee if you want to weigh in as well, it would be great. Uh, but I don't have any more information at this time, but the legislature is in session and bills are being proposed as we speak. So hope to see something there. Just the 10 cent deposit. Um, yeah, this would be uh, maybe Bob, maybe you've heard anything. Uh, it'd be expanding to um, from five cents to 10 cents on deposits and also expanding the, uh, the number, the types of containers, uh, beverage containers that are, uh, uh, redeemable, um, leading mostly to sports drinks is the big gap there, and there's others. Uh, whether liquor bottles uh, are involved or not, I'm not sure, but that's mostly the sports bottles and things that you see in the same um, same grocery aisle that you do the rest of the things and uh, say, why is this recycle? Why is this redeemable and deposit, and why is this not kind of thing? So, mm -hmm. Bob, have you heard anything more about that uh, through your avenues? No, just I, I remember hearing of that, um, or perhaps even reading that the ten cent deposit was uh, being proposed because maybe five cent isn't enough to motivate people now. Right. <clears throat> and there's also statistics that show that the um, the states that do have a ten cent deposit uh, have a much higher um, redemption rate. Mm. So, well, we we shall see. Uh, I have one more piece of new business um, that's not on the agenda because I just got the information yesterday. Uh, Sylvie, who most of you know in the Public Works Department, made me aware of the fact that I think it's Fairfield. I called today, but can I leave a message? Um, is actually getting paid for propane tanks. Oh. And Bob, right now we have to pay to dispose of propane tanks. Is that correct? The uh, the twenty pound tanks that get dropped at the transfer station. Do we get, do you know what happened? I don't remember. I don't remember a specific bill for that. It's it's possible, or maybe lumped into something else. Okay, I'm not sure if it goes with the metal or it's separate from the metal. So I think they get separated. Um, well, maybe they take. Maybe the place off to ask. Maybe they take it for free. They get the metal, but um, I, I know that you have to have uh, if they're pressurized containers. You have to be careful with how they handle them. Once right. there's holes in them, then they're just scrap metal. Okay. Um, so Sylvie let me know that she was under the impression that another town, I think it was Fairfield, as I say, uh, was actually receiving money for the propane tanks. So um, she gave me the contact information. I reached out, like I say, today, left a message. So I'll hear back later this week, uh, being tomorrow or Friday. Uh, and I'll report back by the next meeting if I find out more and what, and Bob, I would obviously be in touch with you uh, and possibly the first selectman about if we need to uh, look at a potential contract. But I think it'd be great if uh, the town was able to make any money on, on propane tanks and also let people know that if we are, certainly then promote it even more so because right now they just kind of pile there, I think, at the transfer station. I wasn't really sure where they ended up. They have a like a 12 year lifespan or something when you go to refill them they, they have to check the dates and then because they could get rusty or whatever right. there's a way you could certify them but it's not worth doing so most people have to get rid of them after the 12 years i paid to get rid of mine like five dollars uh. so <laughs> <laughs> and what yeah, town you, is that bob <laughs> I, I, bethany didn't take them but uh i, I brought it to agway somebody said they take them there Oh, really? I mean, Bethany might take them for a fee. I'm not sure. That's where I got rid of it. Interesting. Oh, yeah. If we can get paid for it, that would be good. Okay. All right. Um, well, we've got you, Bob. Um, nice to have uh, you with us tonight. Is there anything you want to bring us up to speed on concerning recycling or anything at the transfer station that you'd like us to be aware of or need help with that we can help? No, well, the um, no, you can't help with it. But the uh, what we what we can never do again is um, we um, ground ground up all the brush and trees and stuff there, 
and because of budget limitations, we held off until last July 1st. And then um, the contractor didn't wasn't able to come back until August and then it's a yes happened. And then there was no market for anything to do with trees or wood. Really? So he wasn't able to get rid of it. And it sat there and then around November, it started lighting itself on fire. Sure. And uh, it's been doing that for quite a while. We, we are oh, getting wow. rid of it now. Um, but it's just a, that kind of mulch is not good to keep. I know, get, I've, I've, you know, we, I've well known they get hot, but the piles were big enough that they caught on fire. And we're tracking that new um, bulky waste uh, fees. It's, it's a little early because uh, they really only started in September, but it looks like the tonnage is down from contractors uh, particularly. Um, so I guess that's a good thing because it's less we have to pay to get rid of. Right. Kind of like the plastic bag fee. If the, if the intent was for the state to make money on it, it was a failure. If the intent was to stop people from using plastic bags, it worked very well. Yeah. So same thing. It's it, uh, there may be just a lot less bulky waste going to the uh, transfer station, but it's kind of kind of hard to tell with only a few months of data. I, I will say with the plastic bags, Bob, that I am shocked. Maybe too strong a word, but very surprised at how much plastic, soft plastic, that not just myself but this town collects and puts in that bin every week uh even with a plastic bag ban at the stores there's so many other sources mm -hmm. of that soft plastic that it's still you know i think somebody the translation said well now that we have the plastic bag ban that we won't need that anymore but it's been just the opposite it's it seems that we've it's been very popular we're very pleased with it and uh uh sometimes i'm just amazed at how many how much we can go through well, if it stays stays out of that recycling stream for the other stuff, which I guess messes up, yep, yeah, the, uh, the market value of the other things or the processing. So someday we'll get to that uh, recycling plan. I'd like to, yep, like to go on a tour and try to understand better what they do. <clears throat> Loretta, uh, a couple of things. Uh, one of the articles in the Wall Street Journal uh, spoke about companies that are trying to repackage their products in paper that looks like plastic. So people Loretta, 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 start again. You broke up, and I don't think we heard you. Oh, I'm sorry. What? Now? Okay. What uh, a little better. Uh, you're, in, you're, in, you're in an echo chamber there. Okay. Talk loud. <laughs> Journal spoke on uh, how many how some companies are trying to uh, uh, change to paper for their products. Uh, they uh, they have enclosed them in plastic, but now they're trying to change to paper that looks like the plastic, in, so that people will still recognize it, but it will be paper and recyclable. So I think that's very exciting if we can move to that direction. Uh, another thing, I didn't know that the town, if you separate out your cardboard and put it in that big bin at the uh, transfer station, the town gets money for it. So I've been passing that word around and I think it's good to for people to know. Uh, the other thing, oh, my husband was at the uh, transfer station a couple Saturdays ago, and he saw that this internal combustion was going on with the uh, Roundup uh, plant material, and there was an enormous, huge, it uh, wasn't a backhoe, what would it be, not a bulldozer, payloader, payloader, that was sort of pushing this stuff forward a bit, and then he turned around and went over to Home Depot, scooped up from the snow pile, they had an enormous snow pile, scooped up snow, took it back to the transfer station, dumped it on the uh, pile, and went back and forth in an attempt for free to uh, <laughs> put out the fire. Free, I say, we don't need the firemen, we just use what Mother Nature gave us, a huge pile of snow. So that, I thought that was a, a very amazing uh, 
story when he came home and told me. That's uh, very ingenious there, Bob, from uh, yeah. the uh, transfer station to be using snow to put out the fire. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Re recycling, yeah. I love it. Yes, yes. <laughs> And Loretta is correct. Um, for anybody who doesn't know or is watching this uh, on OGAT, um, one of the reasons why we separate the corrugated cardboard at the transfer station is because the town does get paid for it. And as we said before, the more separation we can do, um, the more value there is in any of the products. So separating out the cardboard is a good thing. And um, for, for recycling purposes and for monetary purposes, so that's a that's a good thing. Um, Bob, I have a quick question. I'll put you on the spot for one second. Do you see any um, change or even a mandate coming from the state about mattress recycling? Because I hear more and more transfer stations are accepting mattresses on a regular basis. I know we have not uh, agreed to that as of yet. I don't know if you've heard or seen anything more on that. No, but uh, I know that... Um that capital region burn plant is supposed to shut down in a year or two, which that serves a third of the state or something. And the Wallingford already shut down. So Connecticut is uh, shifting back uh, except for, you know, Bridgeport. And I think one out towards new London, we're shifting back to landfills and we don't have any landfills. So our solid waste policy is truck it out of state to big landfills elsewhere. Hmm. So I think the state is really going to be pushing um, recycling. Yep, I think it is. And, and any kind of um, stewardship, you know, that like like the paint that is sold and taken back at paint stores and mattresses that are sold and, and taken back at at uh, at mattress stores. Um, but hopefully we can do we do more of that at the transfer station would be helpful. And of course, we do uh, work with the Bye Bye Mattress. Uh, and the mattress council to um, collect mattresses at our shredding day event as well. And we've been pretty successful with that. So and we'll continue to do so. <clears throat> All right. Is there anything else uh, that I have not brought up that um, anyone else uh, wants to bring up under new business? Mark? No. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. I, I just have one question, just yeah, a quick Wendy. question about the um, the shed. Do you know, can you put in there like the very big, thick uh, plastic bags, like dog food bag or bird seed bag, that kind of thing that feels plastic, but it's very, it's very thick. Can that go in there? I'm not familiar exactly what you're talking about. I do know we had a discussion with someone at the fair, not this past year, the year before, about those plastic bags. And I, for lack of a better term, a burlapy feel, uh, those are not recyclable and cannot be put with the plastic bags. Like, so I'm not like a 20 pound bag of bird seed or like a 40 pound bag of dog food, you know that. If, if, if it's the same kind of plastic you'd see, the answer is yes. But if it's a tougher. Um, yeah, I know what you mean, uh, like fabric. Fabric or, or insulated mm -hmm. type material, the answer is no. Okay. Yeah, because I put the big bags for like if you buy uh, soil uh, at Home Depot oh, yeah. or mulch, I put those because those are all plastic. Right. Those are large. As long as, you get, all the, as, long as you get all the mulch out of that bag, which is difficult. <laughs> Turn it inside out. That, yeah, that is a good question, though, as far as the type of plastic that can go in there. I mean, I had been on the website, and it, you know, it explains it somewhat. But there is a lot of different varieties of plastic. And I wonder if you put the wrong kind in there, does that contaminate it the way that, I mean, I wonder how that would ruin the batch if that was, if the couple that were in there, that shouldn't be. But there is, again, a lot of different kinds of plastics. And sometimes it is tough to know what, what can go in there, what can't. And you, I tend to err on the side of putting it in anyway, but maybe yeah. I maybe. Well, you know, there's, there's, also a, there's also a term called wishful recycling, where people yeah. put things in recycled bins because they wish it will you know, hope it, hopeful uh, that it is recyclable and it could do more damage than good. So um, I follow what Cheryl Baldwin told us from the DEP when she spoke to us, when in doubt, throw it out. You know, if we're not sure, you're better off throwing it out as opposed to contaminating the, um, the load. Um, so I think, Mark, I think the, 
the soil bags and the um, mulch bags, as long as they're clean or somewhat clean, would be okay. But putting in some of the thicker plastics that are a, more of a composite as opposed to the uh, plastic. And, you know, but I think it's the number four is good, but you got to be watching those numbers too at times. Yeah, I don't put any of the hard plastic, you know, the casings that some. No, none of that. I mean, yeah, that just goes in the. The, bl the blister packs that cover like batteries and, and things like that are not. <laughs> not recyclable at all. They're not recyclable in your blue bin, nor are they recyclable with the plastic bags. Those unfortunately are garbage. Mm -hmm. So for now. Okay. All right. Anything else from anybody? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So move. Moved by Loretta. Is there a second? Oh second. Second Chris. All right. If not all in favor of adjourning signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned at 741. Thank you, everyone. Stay safe. Good night. Thank you, Mitch. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Mitch. Everybody. Great seeing you. Bye-bye, everyone. And our next Bye. meeting is what? Wednesday the 17th.